everybody. Brian David Marshall coming to you from the Tournament Center at Pro Tour Dragon's Maze here in sunny San Diego. And I am with the Tesserator himself, Kenny Oberg. You remember him from Pro Tour Berlin. And you and I, Kenny, yeah. had a very interesting discussion on Thursday where you found yourself, you found yourself and, and the Swedish team mm -hmm. in the grips of a dilemma. Describe the conversation we had. Uh, the, the conversation was like, do I, uh, what deck should I play? And do I want to gamble or not? I, I can't know the meta game of this tournament beforehand. And that's why I call it the gamble to you. And I hadn't really decided even at that time what I was going to play in this tournament. And so when you're talking about a gamble, you're, you're talking about a deck that is very good against one portion of the field, but highly vulnerable to another. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the gamble is that you're lo you need a better result. You don't want to play just a safe, consistent deck. Exactly. You want to take a big swing. Yeah, exactly. I, need, I knew I was going to need a great finish in this tournament. Uh, so I didn't want something just very consistent. I just wanted something that might have a high, high risk, high reward uh, kind of thing. Uh, and the gamble was like, how much mono red will it play, be? How much Sphinx of Revelation decks will it be? And I wanted it to be a lot of Sphinx of Revelation decks, but I couldn't know until Saturday. Until you sat down to play that first round, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so how has it played out for you? It played, in, terms of, in terms of what the metagame has looked like? It played out perfectly. It's like 4% of mono red in the tournament. Uh, and there is like, what is it, 40% more and more Sphinx of Revelation decks. And so when you say Sphinx of Revelation deck, you're talking about like an Esper control, Azorius yeah. control, and Bant control. Yeah, I think it's even more uh, of them, actually, if you bump them together. Esper alone is 27%. So. so let's take a look at the crazy deck that you played, and we'll begin... With the end. With the end, exactly. <laughs> Maze's end. So this is, this is your deck's win condition. Yeah, it's the only way I won today and yesterday at all. I never done little. Oh, I done little with a cyber car later to we'll get to. Uh, <laughs> but main deck is the only win condition, basically. And what makes this card singularly good against the control decks? They can't interact with it at all. Uh, you only search a land every turn, a new gate, and what can they do? They can play the Swings of Revelation, they can draw like 20 cards. It doesn't matter unless they actually kill you. And everyone is playing Edeling as a win condition, so they have to do it through combat. And that makes it really hard for them to win. But, but it would seem to me that if they resolve an Etherling, that it's going to be very easy for them to just go boom, 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 and kill you in a couple of swings. Yeah, but they have to keep mana up, so they cannot play it until like turn eight. You will have eight gates by then. <laughs> they, they are on a short clock here. So uh, how will they manage enough attacks? And they have cards that fog, edel fog Edeling for a turn or two or three. And that happens like the attack with Edeling, pump it. You play a removal, they're like, oh, blink it. Oh, another turn, another gate, and uh, closer to solving the puzzle. <laughs> so again, this is a little bit of a backwards deck deck. Normally we would do the lands at the end, but let's take a look. We see two, 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 two. two. And then again, the next slide, we see 20 gates. 20 gates. All 10 of them, which is what you need to win yeah. with Maze's End. What, uh, why not be like, you couldn't like bias your deck so they're like, oh, I have one of this one or one of that one? Uh, I, tr I tried it for, uh, to start off with, uh, one of each gate and four Maze's End and a regular control deck with Swings of Revelation stuff. But the point is, you don't want to play a non-gate land or not Maze's End uh, because it slows down your clock by a turn. Each gate you don't play, play is another turn the opponent gets to attack with his Edeling and so on. Right, so you're making land drops and Maze's End and... Yeah, so I only play gates and Maze's End becomes a gate always, so uh, the idle game is that you only play gates and Maze's End during the entire game. Okay, but that said, we do have on the next slide four basic lands. Yeah, it, it's a con concession for the faster aggressive decks. Uh, where you might need to be able to play one or two removal earlier than expected, uh, and then you need an untapped land. Some times when they tap out, you would need an untapped land to play out uh, some uh, stall cards or extra sure. removal. I, and I also saw some situations when I was watching the deck yesterday where you need to play an untapped land to activate your, guilt, your, your Maze's End that turn. Yeah, But exactly. you're doing other things, you want to play an untapped land, activate your Maze's End, you, you can always play that gate on that other on that other turn. Yeah, exactly. So, that, but that's basically like uh, playing a gate if you play an untapped land to search, <laughs> because you only get one gate out of it anyway. So these are just four more gates, is what you're telling me. Almost. Almost. Okay. So let's get into the heart of the deck. Let's talk about. So now a lot of people when they 
we've seen a couple of gate decks, of Mazes and decks yeah. on Magic Online, but they really seem to revolve around like Druid's Deliverance and Riot Control yeah. and other fog effects. But instead of fogs, you've gone for just removal. Everything is removal or life gain. Okay, so, and sometimes it's both. We see yeah. War Leader Celix. Uh, talk, talk us through the removals and what, what, why you chose these cards. The Helix, Helix is basically uh, uh, the Green Gate uh, Keeper extra, like 5 to uh, 8, L7 actually. So if I could not play more Gatekeepers, I would. <laughs> okay, Devour Flash? Uh, it's a cheap 2 mana removal. Uh, and that's basically one of the best removal you have because it's early and kills anything. Have, have you ever used it on your own Cerule Gatekeeper to gain more life? Not yet, actually. <laughs> I had situations where it would be interesting if I jump and I'd use it on myself, but I haven't needed, needed to. Okay, Dreadbore, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, extra fleshes, actually. Yeah. Now, th this card, far and away, how good is this card? Amazing. It, 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 you know, we watched people yesterday splitting Jace Factor Fictions, and yeah. it would be like Supreme Verdict, other card far away, and take Definitely. the far away. Yeah, I had another split today where my opponent uh, got a single far away as well, just to bounce his own sync collector and play it out. So oh, wow. it works in many ways against both aggressive decks and against control decks in right. that way. Right, you can just utterly devastate your opponent's board, you can yeah. kill their one creature, reset something on your side of the board. Yeah. Um, and it's an instant to boost. And it's so. an instant, yeah. Just, just a phenomenal card. Uh, mugging. Uh, not completely unconvinced that Mono Red would be there? And the, it's the only one mana removal spell in the entire format, except for Electricery, uh, because everything else is multicolored or more mana. So it's basically the cheapest removal you can have. Uh, and I would play more if I could. And this, and this again goes back to when we saw the mountains yeah. in the basic land slot. You want to be able to go mountain, kill that. Yeah, his ca crackler or, or uh, uh, experiment Street Wong Denizen or whatever. Or, yeah, absolutely. Uh, one Putrefy. Yeah, <laughs> that card was actually another more funny card from the beginning. It was an Aetherize. <laughs> oh, I knew you liked that. I do, I love Aetherize. Marshall and I argue about that card in Limited, but uh, and then a couple of big removal spells here. Yeah. Merciless Eviction, not a card I've seen a lot of, but no. I mean, it also exiles everything and it's really flexible. Yeah, the main point is that it handles voice uh, and removes it from the game so he doesn't get a token. Or it could randomly remove a, a Pithing Needle or something. So I was. Uh, so that's interesting. This card trumps Voice of Resurgence. Yeah. Yeah. And all the regenerators re as well from Golgari. And, and theoretically, you could get a pesky uh, pith Pithing Needle if you had to. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Six mana, get rid of that pithing needle. Uh, Mizium Order is one of the best removal spells in the format? Yeah, it's amazing. Maybe definitely because it kills the Blood Baron. Oh, yeah. I have yet to overload it, though. <laughs> you, think? Uh, you have your own Sphinx's Revelation. Technically, you're a Sphinx's Revelation deck. I cyber now every time. Does that count them? <laughs> it's okay. one of the worst cards in the deck. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, one of the best cards in the deck that I've been watching. Mm -hmm. I, I love I love Urban Evolution. I mean... You know, you it's, my, it's my kind of card. Uh, how, how has this card been for you? Amazing. It speeds up your kill by a turn. So you get an extra gate uh, drop. <laughs> yeah, not even worried about the card draw. You're just like that extra land Yeah, drop. the extra land. Exploration is enough for five. Sure. And then this is the card I think that, that took a lot of people by surprise this weekend. Yeah. So really gatekeepers, gain seven life, mm -hmm. re re you know, put it back to your hand with far and away. Yeah, exactly. Replay it. It's amazing. It's definitely one of the best dollars when you get there. Uh, but you have to play all the removal earlier to get the Cerule, which you only get on turn five because of all the tap lands. Sure, yeah, all your lands coming to play tap. Okay, I want to take a look at your sideboard. There's specifically one card. Oh, wait, we still are these. This is sideboard now, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, Sire of Insanity, Sin Collector, Blood Baron of Viscopa, whatever these cards. Let's get to the next slide. There's a specific card I want to see. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Uh, it's an additional win condition against the control decks and against Pithing Needle. Oh, very interesting. So if someone Pithing Needles Maze's End, you play this. You're, you're all in on the Crackling Perimeter plan. Have you killed anybody with a Crackling Perimeter? I killed three players and three Planeswalkers uh, in these two days. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Kenny Oberg killing players and Planeswalkers with Crackling Perimeter at the Pro Tour, at the top tables for Kenny Oberg, Brian David Marshall from the Tournament Center.